Hello and welcome to the first in my series of tutorial videos for Digistix 2. Now anybody that's new to Digistix might want to go and look at my uh, tutorial videos for Digistix 1 because they cover a lot of things that Digistix 2 can do. But in this video I want to focus on some of the new import export options that are unique to Digistix 2. And I also want to go over some of the changes to the melodic remap function, which, although was available on Digistix 1, uh, uh, has been upgraded slightly for Digistix 2, since we now have 64 pads available. And also, this can be uh, such a useful function if you just know how to use it, so I'm going to go over that today. So what we're going to do today is do a, a simple recording of a note uh, using uh, SenseMaster 1. Uh, I'm going to record that note into Digistix and I'm going to use the melodic remap just to show you and demonstrate what it does. So the first and most obvious thing here is that to record any data we need to have Digistix 2 in an effect slot. That way we can record any data passing through it. Now if you look at Digistix 2 now I've got an empty kit loaded here. And I'm going to tap on one of these pads that I want to assign a sample to and I'm going to hit the record button at the bottom of the screen. Now it's important to note here that monitor is enabled so I can hear the output of SynthMaster 1. Now the first thing we need to do is um, the record button and then just play a note on uh, SynthMaster 1. And lo and behold we have a recorded note. So now if we press the add sample button that sample we've just recorded will be assigned to the selected pad that we chose. Now if you uh, press that pad you can hear it sound. So now we've got a sample uh, applied to that pad, we can hold it uh, down on that pad and pick the melodic remap option, which will bring up this dialog. Now this dialog might look intimidating, but all you're actually doing here is picking a root note and scale. And in this case, I'm going to map to the A major scale. So when we pick the apply button, um, the it will generate a set of um, notes for the pads. Now I'm going to pick uh, pad bank A here and uh, you'll notice now that all the pads have turned blue or at least the text has uh, and each of them is labelled with a note number. Now this functionality assumes that the recorded note is A so that's why I recorded an A from SynthMaster. Now since Digistix is a drum kit um, and we have uh, amongst other things a chimes kit here um, and uh, it makes more sense to remap uh, this kind of content. So if you find a few chimes, a few pads that we actually like, uh, we can pick those pads and remap uh, one single pad uh, sample to an entire bank. Because if we switch banks now you'll see that bank B, C and D are currently empty, but that we can use that to our advantage. So I think one of these chimes that had a nice pure tone was uh, the chime 6, so I'm going to tap and hold on that and I'm going to pick the melodic remap. In this dialogue, I'm not going to do anything fancy, I'm just going to pick the A major scale again and then uh, select the apply button. And this time I'm going to apply to bank B. Now notice uh, this is new to um, Digistix 2. In Digistix 1 you could just apply to all pads, but since we have 64 now it makes more sense to be able to apply to specific banks. That way we can now uh, pick another one of the chimes, the original chimes, and map that to bank C. So let's give that a go. So reselect bank A, and then let's try and find a nice pure tone. Well, that's not bad, we'll try that one. So again, tap and hold on that. Pick the melodic remap. Again, pick the same scale, uh, A major. And this time we're gonna map to bank C. So what we've actually got now is uh, two different original samples uh, mapped over a whole bank of 16 samples uh, to a, a known scale. So now we can actually uh, save that, um, that setup with our song and it will maintain these, uh, these mapping options. 
Now, one important thing to note is that you cannot actually save a drum kit that has melodic remap enabled. You have to save it as a song, and uh, the melodic remap and mapping from different kits will all be saved in that one song. And finally, since melodic remap is a non-destructive operation, we can always pick clear sample references from the menu to go back to the original uh, sounds. So now I want to look at exporting uh, patterns as audio samples to be used uh, in external packages. So as you can see here, I have a simple rhythm. I'll just demonstrate that one. So as you can see, that pattern is actually 32 beats in length, and I want to create a, a audio file from that. So we just pick a export to WAV from the song menu and it will go along and play it and then ask for a file name. It's a, it will give you, prompt you with the same name as a song uh, and uh, we just simply uh, save that to the files app and that can be loaded uh, externally. Now one other thing we can do if we, uh, we have a kit that's in a editable group um, Let's just play this little, it's a variation on the clip I had before, but I'm actually using this time a kit which is in the user uh, folder, if we just go check, uh, called EDM kit. And because some of these banks here are empty, if we go to bank C, I can just tap and hold on a pad and then pick the uh, mix down option. And when I confirm the mix down, it will go ahead and play back this um, this pattern. And then at the end of it, it will end up in the editor and we can audition it here, make additional changes, crop it as we like, and then eventually assign it to back to the pad. And we can trigger the pad and it will just play once. Now, if we want that to loop continuously, we can uh, cycle through the pad options window until we find the option uh, the loop option here we can select that and change it to loop and then it will play continuously uh, looping until we press that pad a second time to stop it now as well as being able to export to audio we also have the ability to export either patterns or songs to uh, MIDI and not only that we can either export uh, to the files app as a MIDI file or alternatively, we can export directly to the Helium MIDI Clips folder, which is really, really useful and saves a whole lot of time. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that one first. So once you have a pattern uh, on view, uh, select the uh, Export Pattern to MIDI option from the Songs menu. And in this case, I'm going to select the Helium as an option, Helium Clips folder. We give it a name and we just uh, acknowledge that. As we can see, we already have a clip of that name and it's even written it. But the great thing about this is if we go into Helium and bring up the uh, media bay, uh, you'll notice there's a Digistix folder down there. And it, all exports appear in here. And we just need to drag and drop that back onto the timeline. And we have our drum beat uh, exported to, uh, to Helium directly. Now, if you wanted to use that in another package other than uh, Helium, we can simply pick uh, Export to MIDI. And in this case, just pick a MIDI clip and you will get to be uh, able to choose a destination where to save that in the Files app. Uh, so quite easy, really. Now, while we're on import and exporting, uh, I might as well cover the importing and exporting of drum kits because there are times when if you create your own drum kit, you might want to pass that on to a friend or something. So if you go back to the main menu, um, you'll notice here we have uh, backup and restore options. And if we pick, say, backup, we'll get an option of uh, backing up the currently selected drum kit or the entire bank. So if you've created a bank of drum kits, you can mass export those. And if I pick Restore, you'll say we have the same options here. We can also export songs from this menu. On the uh, drum kit menu, we have direct uh, export drum kit options. So we can export and rest uh, restore directly uh, from that menu. So that covers backup and restore of drum kits. Now, as well as being able to import uh, samples by simply dragging and dropping from the Files app directly on pads, 
Uh, there are also some other ways of importing samples and I want to go over those now. So as well as tapping and holding a pad for get, to get uh, pad options, you can actually use some shortcuts. If you tap on a pad and then swipe up, down, left, right, uh, for instance up here, we'll display the pad option screen. Uh, swipe left and we get the sample import screen which I'll come back to in a second. Uh, swipe right and we get a record dialog and swipe down and we get the uh, import kit options. So this is all the available kits within Digistix and we can simply browse a kit and then assign a sample to a pad. Now the great thing about this is we can assign a reference to another kit which means it's a non-destructive way of assigning a sample. If you notice it turns blue a little bit like the melodic remap. So we can simply assign uh, sample references into this kit and then they'll be saved with the song. You can always tap hold and then uh, pick the clear reference option to revert back to the underlying sample. So as we saw before, swiping uh, left here brings up the sample import dialog and we can see some of the samples in the, um, uh, in the Digistix folder that we exported previously. I'm going to import uh, one of those loops we exported, um, not only to uh, layer 1, I'm going to also import it to layer 2. And the purpose of that is to show you yet another new feature. So if I tap on sample layer 2 in the window, we can see that the uh, start velocity, in the, I'm going to take it down anyway to 0, so that both layer 1 and layer 2 will both be triggered at the same velocity. Now currently only the first layer has been triggered, so we need to change to the pad options and turn on velocity mode. Now when we press uh, that, new, that pad, both of those layers will be triggered uh, at the same time. Now because both layers are played at exactly the same time, you can't hear anything other than a, ra a raise of volume. So I'm going to change the delay for layer 2 to uh, a quarter note, and let's see the difference. So as you can see, you can get some nice kind of uh, delayed or triplet effects uh, by changing the delay between uh, individual layers within a pad. So you've got up to uh, five layers, so you can have uh, quite a complex setup there. I also noticed that I actually reduced the volume of sample two as well, so it wasn't quite as loud as sample one. So let's just try changing it to a half step and see what that sounds like. Now before I forget, one thing I didn't mention earlier when we were talking about exporting MIDI is the fact that you can actually export your song structure to MIDI. Uh, if you've created a, a, um, a MIDI song uh, with a set of patterns, you can use the export button there to actually export uh, a complete song as uh, MIDI. The last thing I want to talk about today before we, uh, we call it a day with this video um, is some tips uh, using the controllers feature. Um, you, as you know, you can actually apply reverb to a particular pad just by selecting the pad and then up in the reverb level. But that puts the reverb on every single snare beat. So an alternative way is to uh, press the controllers button and go into the controllers lane. Uh, tap on the pad that you want to adjust and then select the uh, reverb send option. Now we can actually uh, pick individual notes uh, that uh, 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 the reverb is applied to. And we can even do the same with, uh, with delay also. So that's a great little trick to have up your sleeve for any of you Digistick 2 users. So that's just about it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Bye for now.